Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure and a privilege to be part of COVER, which is a very well-designed and intellectually stimulating CME. I thank the dynamic team at Naranetralaya for giving me this opportunity again. Giant cell arthritis is a granulomatous panarthritis of unknown origin, affecting the medium and the large vessels, especially the extracranial branches of the carotid artery. The average age is around 72, with a female preponderance of 2 is to 1. Indian studies done at PGI Chandigarh by a group in Mumbai and at St. John's in Bangalore showed that the age group here was a little younger, around 60 plus, with a male predominance, higher ophthalmic symptoms, uh, and uh, possibly uh, lower rates of um, temporal artery biopsy positivity. And because it is considered as an ophthalmic emergency, one has to be very quick in the diagnosis. So what then are the guidelines? In 1990, the American College of Rheumatology came up with these guidelines, wherein age of onset is more than 50, a new type of headache, temporal artery abnormality, as you can see here, the ESR being more than 50, and an abnormal artery biopsy. Three out of five, if present, then general giant cell arthritis was to be considered. In 2016, a revised ACR criteria uh, has been put out where other symptoms and signs, like jaw claudication, visual symptoms, have also been included, and now the uh, score is three out of 11. This is still being uh, estimated and worked out. ESR of more than 50 is what we think of as significant, but one must remember that 10% of the cases, it may be less than 50. In 5% of the cases, it may be normal. In patients on steroids, it may be low. But what has been noted is that if it is more than 100, then it may be predictive of a positive temporal artery biopsy. C-reactive protein is of hepatic origin, and it is the normal values are less than 0.5. So an elevated CRP is usually of significance, especially because it is unaffected by anemia, age, etc. Elevated platelets, leukocytosis, elevated transaminases and alkaline phosphatase, all of these conditions, all of these situations will have to be taken into account. In imaging, ultrasound to image the temporal artery, the MRI and the PET scan are very useful to figure out whether there is any inflamed vessel, but the temporal artery biopsy is the final answer. Using color duplex ultrasonography to image the superficial temporal artery has gained a lot of importance now. It is said that it has 80 to 100% specificity if one is able to get the hypoechoic uh, zone, which is called the dark halo sign around the vessel it's, a, it's an excellent tool to map the uh, course of the vessel and also choose the site for the biopsy. So in other words, if it's an ultrasound-guided biopsy, you have higher chances of success. High-resolution MRI scans, which in this case, as you can see, is taking the whole circumference of the cranium, can show areas of an, in, of an inflamed superficial temporal artery the superficial occipital vessel, both of which you can see here as a mural enhancement, and that would be suggestive of a GCA. Coming to temporal artery biopsy per se, I think we have a video presentation tomorrow, so I will just talk about a few debatable points. One is the length of the segment of the vessel which has to be harvested. The consensus is that it should be about two centimeters in length because skip lesions are well known and uh, false negatives can occur if you take a very short segment. However, there is a study which says that 4 mm of the vessel is adequate. Secondly, the second debatable point is that whether it should be unilateral or bilateral. If bilateral, should it be simultaneous or sequential? It's been found that unilateral biopsies uh, give about 85% of success and bilateral 95%. Now, this is what the intimal thickening that you can see here, 
and an almost closed lumen and the giant cell uh, giant cells, which you can see here, which is suggestive of a very aggressive form of the disease. Now, this is basically a necrotizing, obliterative type of vasculitis, which hits the uh, posterior ciliary vessels, the ophthalmic artery, the superficial temporal, the vertebral. And it's important to know that the treatment of giant cell arthritis is based on a clinical suspicion, on a high clinical suspicion backed by a little bit of blood work and imaging, if possible. So temporal artery biopsies are planned and executed as quickly as possible, but the decision-making as to whether to start the treatment, one does not wait for the biopsy. This is an algorithm meant for the clinicians. I have taken the liberty to break it up into three parts for better understanding. Uh, Dr. Rohit has made my job easier because he, in his excellent presentation, he spoke about how a patient with uh, giant cell arthritis would present an elderly patient with signs of either an amaurosis fugax or visual loss because of any of the conditions mentioned. It could be a new onset headache, which could be either temporal occipital or occipital, occipitonuchal, scalp tenderness, jaw claudication, rarely tongue claudication, abnormal superficial temporal artery on examination, polymyalgia rheumatica, as well as pyrexia of unknown origin and weight loss. Any of these coupled with raised ESR platelets and C-reactive protein are significant. So let us have three clinical scenario where the first one, let us call it scenario A, where there is a very low clinical suspicion, no more than one positive finding, and one could then think of an alternative diagnosis. The second one being the scenario B, where there is a moderate clinical suspicion of two positive findings. And this is a situation where oral prednisolone can be started right away. Scenario C, where there is a high clinical suspicion, more than two positive findings, and especially if the vision is affected, one would want to start the intravenous methyl prednisolone at the earliest, or at least the oral prednisolone. In both B and C, Temporal artery biopsies are ideally done. Now, in scenario A, one could look for an alternative diagnosis. In scenario B, if the biopsy is negative, then one could alternately look for some other reason for the condition. And if it is positive, as the steroids are continued. In scenario C, if the biopsy is positive, then there's no problem, you continue the steroids. But if it is negative, then one could consider a contralateral biopsy, or if the clinical suspicion remains high, continue the steroids. In conclusion, giant cell arthritis is an under-recognized and easily missed condition because it's a great masquerader. It is an ophthalmic emergency because there is irreversible vision loss and the second eye is at risk. Temporal artery biopsy is the gold standard for diagnosis and the response to steroids is dramatic. One has to do long-term monitoring of these patients for treatment compliance, relapses in the eye, and one should not look, forget to look for relapses elsewhere and changes in the other large vessels because aortic aneurysms also have to be remembered. Thank you very much for your kind attention.